All right, so uh, we're just trying to do some business right here before we get on air. So TV3 New Day, and I have a fashion powerhouse in the house. And it's good to know that he's Ghanaian as well, but also his brand is all across the world. He is located in Norway, but he has shops. Um, he has his brands in London, in Spain, and many other places as well, Tokyo, and a few other places. And so help me introduce T. Michaels, and he joins me this morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well. Thank Welcome you. Welcome back home. Yeah. After how many years? Um, well, the last time I was here was nine years ago. Nine? But... but, but um, but I feel it there, you know, it's in there, it's yeah, always been there. I know, but why has it so, taken you so long to come back home? Um, it's just, you know, the, the, the fashion seasons sort of creep up on you and then yeah. it creeps up on you and then before you know it, it's nine years. So yeah. it's, it's unfortunate, but um, I'll be back. You'll be back. Yeah, yeah. But you're gone. So have you had some comic kina and all those things? See, I've had Kelly Willie though. We are more gone. And I have, I have watches. as we well. We are more Oh. We are more gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you lost touch with that as well. Oh, uh, I've got it. I've got it. It's in there. It's so in when there I somewhere. speak the guy, would you understand? Oh, totally. So when I said we are more gone. So you had some. Yeah. I, oh, you yeah. call me. Uh, I don't hear Kelly with because I don't like uh, Ken K anyway. I don't need I don't need anything maze, you see. That's the thing. No? I've but never you're had a girl, it. Man. I know, I know. It was an issue when I was a little boy, you yeah. know. So, but, which part uh, of Greater Accra are you from? Uh, well, I was we used to live at Kanda before and Okay. Then, yeah. Okay, uh, but are you from Jamestown? Are no, you from, no, my parents are from Prom Prom. Prom Prom. Yeah, so, so you are da I'm a a Angbe. A dangwe, ga dangwe. Yeah, dangwe. Yeah. Okay. Mm. okay, but you don't speak that either. Well, same thing. It's it's latent. Oh, yeah, some yeah, and all those things. I don't even know if that's a dangwe or cobble. <laughs> it's cool. It's but cool. welcome back Close. home. Thank you. How are you loving it so far? It's been amazing. Yeah. I mean, all the people I've met, uh, family, uh, the food. Um, people kept, kept telling me it's going to be hot. I'm like, yeah, I want to sweat. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah, it is good, right? Fun. Yeah. And you are a fashion powerhouse, so you need to tell me about the brand T. Michael. When did it start? Where did it start? How oh. did you get here? Um, well, um, well, I, I, I trained as a tailor many, many, many years ago. That's okay. like, um, I finished tailoring school and I opened up my studio in 1996. But that wasn't in Ghana, was no, it? No, that was in Ghana. That was in Norway. Okay, okay. So that was 1996 and I opened up my first studio and I was hopeful and I was ready to conquer the world in two days. In two days? Of course it didn't happen. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it takes Why like 20 years. Hurry? Yeah. Every designer is in a hurry. That's yeah. a problem. And that's, that's something I like to tell designers today is, is don't, don't rush it. It's, okay. um, the thing is you're never ready when you start. So it mm. takes time for you to find your inner voice and find your vernacular. And then you have to trade it out. Yeah. And then people have to understand it. And then it grows from there. So you need, you need the time to get it right. Definitely. So, but even before you went to tailoring mm. school, how did you identify your talent? Uh, but I've always, I've always, like I keep saying, I've always spent the money I didn't have on all the clothing that I wanted to buy. Mm, so you were a very stylish person. I, I was very, very interested in dressing up. Kind okay. Of thing. Um, and then, and then eventually realized that you buy the clothes and it's like, mm. yeah, it's not quite, you know, it's, um, it's good, but you want it a little bit better than it, it is. So you, you start, you know, pulling up a sewing machine and then trying to cut things up and, and, yeah. um, yeah. and then you realize that, oh, I can actually do that, you know. And, and then you, you, you make that decision where you actually want to make something out of it. And that's when you become a grown up. Yeah. So yeah. how long did you go for tailoring school for? Four years. Four years. Yes. So that was like a proper degree. Oh yeah. If you're going to do it, go do it properly. Well, there are people who don't have necessarily a degree, but they are still very talented. So. No, but I, I, I believe, yes, see the talent has nothing to do with the skills mm. um, and, and the technical know-how you get when you go to a tailoring school or any, any, any profession really. Uh, but I think it's important to have the right foundation. Yeah. And then after that, you can spin your style on it. You know? Exactly. Because everything, you've got, everything that would be you will come from inside you. Yeah. And then that foundation will help it grow so people actually look at it and, and give it some respect. Mm -hmm. um, without the foundation, you probably would need someone else to help you get things done. Certainly. Yeah. Mm. So the T. Michael brand, did mm. you start that immediately after... Well, the T. Michael School. brand is, is practically me. And I, I started that um, eight days after I finished school. Eight days? You were in that much of a hurry. I was in a hurry. Like I told you, I wanted to conquer yeah. the world in two, two, two years. So I, I went to London. I bought lots of fabrics, went back to Norway, opened up my studio on my um, 30th birthday. So it was like a landmark for me as well. It's like, okay, from here on, 32 Super famous. Yeah. It's not that happened. No, it didn't happen that yeah. way, did it? But what does T. Michael yeah. stand for? T. Michael, uh, Michael is my first name. T. Right. is Tata. 
uh, my mom used to call me T. Yeah. And then t Michael T. Nante became T. Michael. It was just very short. Yeah. And I felt the T and Michael was more me than okay. the Nante. Nante was like, Mr. Nati means you've done something wrong. Oh, it means you've done something wrong. Yeah, kind of thing, you know? <laughs> but tell me about your brand. So when oh. we say T. Michael, what, what, do, what should we think of? What does it stand for? I, I like to explain it as a conceptual approach to menswear, men's tailoring. So oh. it's all based on the, the basics of the shirts, trousers, jackets, um, coats, um, suits. Yeah. Um, but I like to twist them out into a different sort of way and put my yeah. spin on it. Um, I don't want to wear suits like my dad wore them. I want to wear them my way. So yeah. that's the difference, yeah. We're taking a look at some of your designs. Um, and I see tea kimono. Yes. And so I'm, I'm a bit confused. So is that different from tea Michael? Yes, tea kimono, we started that um, four years ago. I was oh. called in by a Japanese company, um, which is massive in, in, in Japan. It, right. They own about 140 stores. They've been working since 1916. And they called me to, um, to revamp um, the kimono. So hey. practically, I went in there and I looked at what they had and I designed the kimono and I practically called it tea kimono. Tea kimono? Yeah. So this is more like what, a suit, but then a kimono kind of suit? Yeah, kind of thing. It's like a nice fuse of what you wear normally if you're going to suit up. And then by the same time, you've got the Japanese wear as well, which they will wear when they want to look good. So it's a nice middle way without losing any of the elements of, of any of them. So this is totally different from what the Norwegian Rain This is rain totally different something. from Norwegian Rain as well, yes. yeah. Norwegian Rain is, is a brand that uh, I started, or we started uh, with, I started with uh, my partner in Norwegian Rain called Alexander Heller. We started this, um, actually we're 10 years next year. Um, we started 13 years ago, and we live in the rainy city of Norway. All right. And actually, it's the rainy city of Europe. It rains two or three days. Mm. So we take what we don't like, and then we add it with what we know, and then we create a raincoat, which doesn't look like a raincoat. What does it look like? It looks like a fabulous piece of garment. I see. Yeah. And, but it's 100% waterproof, technical, recycled polyesters, Japanese fabrics, and it's, it's like top notch. Okay. When it comes to creative juices, I believe everybody has an inspiration. What goes into deciding that, well, I'm going to make an outfit that looks like a raincoat, but not exactly a raincoat, or I'm going to make a kimono that looks like a suit, but not exactly a suit. How do you arrive at your designs? Um, I mean, that, that takes a bit of time. Uh, but, but I think the most important thing is you should always, always question things you see. Mm. And that's, that's actually what uh, getting inspiration is, because you, know, you might see the same wall with the same pictures on it every day when you come to your office, but you don't really notice it, because just, you're, you're just looking at it. But the day you start actually looking at it, you find something that you've never noticed before. Mm. And that's when it kicks in. That's when this, the mind actually starts um, processing what you see. In, and that's where the creativity comes from. So do you illustrate before you... I do some illustrations, but I, I do a lot of research. I think research for me is, is the most important part of, of design What process. do you research on? Um, if I want to work on kimonos, I want to read everything I can about kimonos. I want to know where kimonos start from, why it did, da 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 and, and then... Yeah, it's just basically trying to understand what kimono is before okay, I go before. in and do anything to it. Uh, Tell me about what you're wearing because this is also one of your designs. Yes, um, it's just practically a, a, a loose, oversized, um, quite long shirt. Okay. Um, um, it's, it's actually based on a tuxedo kind of shirt. So mm. it's got a front bit, but it's not that fancy in a way, you know. Yeah. And, and a crop shorts um, and a long, fantastic socks as well. Long, fantastic socks. Okay, no, we need to see this before we carry on with the conversation. I don't know where we could go. Okay, we need to see this outfit. Maybe you should stand for you us to stand? see. Okay. So I this is stand. your design. This is my design. Is this what I'll see you wearing at any point in time? Oh, no, this is my, this is my summer get-up. Is it? Yeah, so normally okay. I wear a suit, but um, this, this is my summer you make You make bags, you make, do you make shoes as well? I make bags, I make shoes. Are you shoes? wearing this your own shoes? Own okay, shoes. no, we need to take a look at this. <laughs> What, what would you call this style of shoes? Well, this, this is something we're just um, working on. So I'm actually road testing it right okay. now. Okay. Um, it will be in the stores in, in um, spring, summer. All right. Um, it's actually 100% waterproof. Yeah. Um, and and it's, it's, actually, um, it's engineering, practically. But a lot of guys would say, I'm not sure about having, you know, the full shoe with the buckle up and all of that because they might say it looks a little... Exactly. But that's the thing about style, though. You don't look at someone else's and pick it up. You okay. go to the store, you buy whatever you want to buy, you think about what you like, 
and then you make it your style. But don't people look at you in a weird way, like, what the heck is he wearing? Why well, is he wearing I, that? Well, yeah, I get a people that look at me, but I think look at me because they're thinking, damn. Ah, I know, right? <laughs> okay, I actually like it. I think it's nice, and it's Thank different. You. But you don't have a store in Ghana. Why so? Especially um, because you are Ghanaian. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't have a store yet, I would say. I mean, okay. just, just to sort of... Um, but at the same time, I think my... my, my um, for me, it's not about just putting up the store. Um, it's, it's, if I get it right, if I get the atmosphere right, the space right, I'll put it up. But I'm more interested in, 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 in mentoring and um, okay. helping people out and nudging people um, so they can find their direction. Yeah. So it's, that, for me, is something I like to do more of in, in Ghana. If I was Speaking of mentoring, you yeah. have spoken at TEDx. Uh, yes. You did that, what, about three years ago? Yeah, three, four three, years four ago. Three, four years yeah, ago. Yeah. We have that video, and so let's take a look at it okay. and see what else he does apart from fashion. Right. I not like the way you do it, but they will pay attention. And, and hopefully, over time, they will come around. Um, so I like to add a little bit of abstraction to my work. I like to think conceptual uh, way of thinking. I like to think of surrealistic approaches to everything I do. So in effect, the film and the way we do this film reflects my attitude to everything um, that crosses my path. Um, I'm a tailor. Um, I'm a designer. And I like to dabble in films and so on and so forth. Um, before I go any further, I'd like to introduce myself properly. My name is Michael Tetenate, uh, Michael T. Nate, T. Michael, as most of you know me. Um, I was born in Accra, Ghana, some odd 49 years ago. Um, spent my teenage years in London and moved to Norway 25, 26 years ago after I met my ex-wife in London um, some years back. She's still a lovely person. Um, now, what we do is, it's, you know, I, I do suits and I do shirts and I do um, bags and I do raincoats as well. Uh, now, the raincoats um, was something that we started with because we wanted to change the plot. Um, now, before I had this plot and I stuck to the plot and I had a little bit of that conceptual approaches and, and a little bit of quirky way of thinking and establish what I did before. But now with the raincoats, we had to go one step further and, and, and think, how can we take something so um, mundane? I mean, like rain. How can you take rain that's so boring and make it into something exciting? Um, how can you take the fact that it rains in Bergen two or three days and make it exciting for people to think, oh, I want to go to Bergen because it rains two or three days? Um, how can you do that? Um, the, well, there's one simple way of doing it. First of all, you have to have your product, and, and we, we spent a lot of time on it, trust me. We spent years on it, two, three years maybe, and we, we tested it in every single way uh, to get not only the look right, but to make sure it was 100% waterproof. Now, when we got that set out, we decided to go to uh, Milan, um, and we're lucky enough to be invited over by Vogue um, to show at a place called the White... Um, show in Milan, and it's basically the show for uh, cutting edge designers, uh, a little bit avant-garde, the black drapes, black coat, black trousers that you see draped around everywhere. They usually show at these um, trade shows. So there we are, the first time we've been invited to a trade show together um, to show our collection. Now, the collection was quite small. You know, we had two styles and one mini style. Um, we had a single-breasted, double-breasted, and the mini style was the rain show. Um, now, the rain show... Um, anyway, so we get to Milan, and we are given this space down in the basement. Now, the basement is for the, uh, the cool brands, so to speak. So you walk in, and you see all the brands out there, and you're thinking, damn, I'll be next to these people. 
But we didn't have a plan. We, we, just, we just thought it was cool to go to Milan. We didn't have a plan of action at all. So we walk in, we go into our basement, and it's like two adjoining rooms. You walk in, it's like a U-shape in a way. You walk in like that, there's a door, and then there's a main room. Now we had, basically, uh, we had two single breadstead, two double breadstead, and one um, and rain show. So we thought the rooms were way too big to use the two rooms to show the collection. So we had to think a little bit out of the box, get a little bit surreal. And we thought, okay, let's test this theory of mine. You know, let's, let's go really abstract and, and conceptual the way we present this clothing. So we went out, did a few shopping with a little money that we had. Uh, we bought some jute ropes. Um, we went to the store, uh, the grocery store. We found the sunflower. We thought, oh, that's cool. Okay, we bought that. Um, and we found a few sort of um, pieces of a mannequin laying around. We had a hand, the leg, that kind of thing. So basically what we did is we had a sunflower sitting in the middle of the room. As soon as you walk in, you, you, you meet the sunflower on the floor. We had the hands lying around, and we basically did this rope thing network in the room where we tied the ropes around and went through the first room and then back to the back room. Uh, and we had this huge banner that said Norwegian Rain, and it said, um, we're from the rainiest city in Europe. Now, so when you walk past the door, now, let me just say, fashion buyers are the most arrogant and the most unpleasant people in the world. Um, I, I know why they are. All right, and that was Michael Tete Nati. Uh, he runs the brand T Michael, which is a fashion brand, and it's uh, located in various countries across the world. And that was him speaking at TEDx in Norway, uh, telling people how he took something very mundane and turned it into something extraordinary, which is what his brand actually stands for. Now, Year of Return is here, and you're here in Ghana. How are you tapping into this initiative, and what do you even think about Year of Return, first of all? I think it's a magnificent thing. I mean, I, I stumbled upon it. Um, okay. And it's a coincidence that I'm here at the same time as well. Um, so it, it, you didn't plan it? Yeah, it, oh. it, wasn't, it wasn't actually linked up with this at all. But, but I, I felt it was, oh, it's kind of nice, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and I've been watching it um, through Instagram and seeing people coming in. And, and, and I think the beauty of it is it opens up the world to what Ghana is like, yeah. you know. Um, because people like to follow famous people's lives kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know. So it's a way for them to understand a little bit about a country that they probably don't know anything about. Definitely. Uh, but there's so much rich culture, so much goodness out here. We need to get out. Yes, yeah, we do. So, we mm. do. And a lot, of people, a lot of people are coming to experience that as well. Exactly. Um, and you're here for a while as well, so yeah, yeah. Christmas is happening with you here in Ghana. Yes, I'll be here. In, I'll, be, I'll be having Christmas here, and I've been yeah. had it for a long time. So I'm looking forward to Bronya. Definitely. Yeah. Looking forward to Bronya. What do you think about <laughs> the fashion industry in Ghana as well? I haven't really seen a lot of that. Um, yeah. I've, I've been following mostly artists and so on and so forth. So it's, it's like fashion is so close to my work, it's very difficult to 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 um to follow it if you know yeah. what I mean but art is different artists are different they have this uh, approach that is totally different from mine yeah. but similar as well so I like to see um, what different artists are doing and I get inspired by their work certainly yeah. we're looking forward to having you collaborate with a lot more of them cool. but it's great to have you in Ghana Thank and you very we're going to teach you guys language before you go <laughs> Let's do that. You cannot live here without getting the language in you. Anyway, so I've been speaking to T. Michaels. He is an international fashion powerhouse. And he just came down to Ghana to reconnect with home before he goes back again. And so I hope you enjoyed that interview.